today I'm visiting the Portuguese town of Evora. We're going to walk around town and learn all about the local history, including some architecture that goes all the way back to the Roman times. Then we're going to pay a visit to the Bone Chapel. Let's go. That's right, the city of Evora is absolutely packed with history. There's a good chance you probably caught a glimpse of that enormous aqueduct on your way into town. And no way you could go without noticing those heavily fortified city walls. Right now, I'm going to take you through the heart of it all to show you what I found to be some of the most incredibly interesting sites. And if you stick around until the end, I promise to treat you to something even more ancient than that. So let's start things off at that picturesque town square. The history of the area goes back as far as the Celtic days of the Iberian Peninsula. Throughout the ages, it would be taken over by Germanic forces and later the Moors. It would eventually be reclaimed by the Portuguese knight, Gerald the Fearless. This is his fountain, and directly behind it is the 16th century St. Anthony's Church. Heading northeast of this impressive town square, you'll find a corridor featuring a variety of shops, cafes, and restaurants, all designed to meet your tourist needs. Speaking of which, I need to refuel a bit if I'm going to make it all the way through this adventure. And like I mentioned in a previous video, I just couldn't stay away from those pastries. Now that I have a full tank of energy, we'll proceed upward along the path. But oh yeah, I need to pick up a souvenir while I'm here. Yes, let's just say I have a very large collection of those fridge magnets. That pleasant corridor has now brought us to the Cathedral of Evora. The beginnings of this church date back to the 1100s. Over the next hundred years, it would grow considerably in size to soon display an early Gothic-styled appearance that can be enjoyed from multiple angles. Believe it or not, it is actually said to be the largest medieval cathedral in all of Portugal. Just around the corner, we are soon greeted with another pleasant surprise. And I am determined to get a closer look. This is the Roman Temple of Evora, which is nearly 2,000 years old. Having been partially destroyed by some of those aforementioned forces in the 5th century, the ruins of this ancient structure have served many purposes over the years, including being incorporated into the design of a 14th century stronghold. No matter the use, it always seemed to play an important role in town. And to this day, it is still an absolute marvel to behold. Notice the building next door, the one over to the left. <laughs> this was once Everest headquarters for the Inquisition but it now acts as the center of art and culture. Inside, you will find a courtyard of fruit trees that hide an interesting piece of artwork called the Frescos das Casas Pintadas, or the Frescos of the Painted Houses. This 500-year-old decoration is truly a hidden gem. It is one of the few exterior pieces of its kind still around in this area today. Be sure you don't miss it. You'll find the town of Evora to be very pleasantly walkable, with lots of interesting historic places to visit, like the Church of St. Vincent, which has connections to a group of brothers who died as martyrs around the year 300. But I know what many of you are here to see. Yes, this town is also home to a church called the Capella des Assos, or the Chapel of Bones. You'll find a good join to the Church of St. Francis, where you will proceed through this ominous looking doorway. Constructed in the 17th century, this chapel was built to remind the visitor of how fragile and temporary life actually is. It was Franciscan friars who were behind the concept of this macabre looking masterpiece, and they are said to have exhumed around 5,000 bodies to help convey their message on mortality. Based on the time period, I'm assuming that many of these people may have been victims of the plague. I don't think that this place is just all about morbid imagery. There are other more cheerful rooms to this building as well, such as this one containing a very elaborate altar. And there is amazing architecture all around. Just down the street, you can pay a visit to the Royal Palace of Evora, with origins dating back to the 1300s. But remember now, I promised you something extremely ancient. 
we gotta head back outside of the city for this one. Way out in the countryside amongst the fields of cork-producing trees, you'll find an ancient stone circle. It is called the Alamindres Crumb Lake. This megalithic site is actually the largest of its kind on the Iberian Peninsula. The arrangement of these stones is believed to be left over from the New Stone Age around 6 millennia BC. It is speculated that this site was once used for ceremonial gatherings and even possibly function as an astronomical calendar for the planting of crops. While it is currently fenced off to protect the soil from further erosion, they say if you were able to get a closer look, you would see etchings on these stones that may offer up further clues as to their purpose. I'd like to thank you for watching, and if you found this interesting, then be sure to check out some of my other videos from the surrounding areas. As for me, I'm just going to keep on traveling.